You guys didn't forget about the banana, did you? This week on Everything You Need to Know, we're talking about a cruising boat I think that we all know well, and a racer turned boat builder who left his legacy on the boating world forever. We are of course talking about Irwin Yachts. Ted Irwin, that's my dad's name, Ted, but not the same Ted. Ted Irwin owes a lot of his love for sailing to the name Elizabeth, and no, it's not what you're thinking. Elizabeth is not a woman or even a boat. Elizabeth is a city, or two different cities, as it were. Ted Irwin was born in a city called Elizabeth, which is in a place called New Jersey in 1940 and he caught the sailing bug very early on largely because of a boat that was also born in a city called Elizabeth but a different Elizabeth not in a place called New Jersey no Elizabeth City North Carolina where I've actually been it's beautiful you should definitely check it out if you're in the neighborhood but be warned if you're on a boat the transient slips are back in only the boat in question that got Ted Irwin's attention very early on um, was sort of a kit boat that at the time you ordered from a catalog and you built it at home and it's called the Moth. And Ted Irwin's history with this boat is worth talking about. At a young age, Ted Irwin ordered one of these boats and he built it and he started sailing it and more importantly, he started racing it. The Moth was an 11 foot single sail, planing hull, sort of sailing dinghy kind of thing. And it caught on so well that it had its own racing league in the US and in Australia. Although it should be noted, the two moth boats created a world apart were slightly different until more recent times when moth racing class was made international and the boats are all the same now. Ted Irwin went on to race his moth and actually won North American class moth racing and then won the world championship for the moth class. Ted went on after that to serve in the US Coast Guard, which is very admirable, and eventually landed a job as a draftsman and a boat builder for Charlie Morgan at none other than Morgan Yachts. I wanna take a second to thank the patrons who support this channel. Lady K Sailing is just me, producing videos and doing the work to get Lady K up to snuff for her next adventure. And it's a lot of work, but you guys truly do make it worth it. Patrons are people who give a couple of bucks an episode to keep this channel improving. And I want to say thank you to this week's newest patrons, James, Edwin, John, and Michael. But back to Ted. Again, my dad's name. Hi, Dad. Ted Irwin's first design when he was at Charlie Morgan's firm, Morgan Yachts, was a 31-footer called Voodoo in 1963. It, and it took them six months to build this boat. And then Ted actually raced the boat that he designed and helped build for the next two years. And you know what? He won 24 out of the 28 races that he entered, which is not a bad pedigree for a young boat builder. After three years of great success at Morgan, Ted Irwin decided to go on his own and start his own company in 1966, which he called the Irwin Yacht and Marine Corporation. That would change names a bunch of times over the life of the Irwin brand. Anyway, Ted was running the company and acted also as the chief designer, and he released his first boat from Irwin Yachts in 1967, and that was the Irwin 27. Being the company's first boat, the 27 was sort of a test bed for everything Irwin Yachts would come to be. For a 27 footer, it was heavy. It was almost 7,000 pounds and it was fitted with an Atomic 4 inboard, which is sort of a big motor for a 27 foot boat. You can get away with an outboard on a 27 footer. And of particular note also was the keel design. It was a shoal draft of less than three feet but it had a centerboard that came out to make that three feet just a little bit bigger. And by just a little bit bigger, I mean it was almost eight feet with the board down. As a brand new company with only one boat release, 
Irwin, Ted Irwin, again, hi dad, was relentless in keeping the cost down. The, the factory was in Florida. It was a small, just over 12,000 square foot facility. And he produced every single thing he could in house. And I don't just mean the boats. I mean the tooling, the molds, the masks, even the marketing brochures they used to try and sell the boats were printed in their facility, in house. Keep the cost down. So even though Ted Irwin at his core was a yacht racer, most of the boats the company produced were actually cruising boats. And of those, sort of blue water cruising boats, the most typical and recognizable Irwin that we should probably talk about in this whole thing is the Irwin 41. The 41 is a center cockpit released in 1982, weighing some 25,000 pounds, which is the sweet spot for Caribbean cruising boats. Not only does the weight and the four and a half foot draft make it an ideal cruiser, but it also has a skeg hung rudder, which is sort of rare at the time. And it came factory with the option for dinghy davits. In 1982, dinghy davits. This cruiser, the 41, wasn't screwing around with tankage either. It had a 62 horsepower Perkins diesel, that was supplied by a 150 gallon diesel tank and the fresh water 160 gallons she sleeps seven with her aft cabin design and came with two heads both of which have showers basically this boat sounds like every single little thing on my own personal cruising boat checklist to be honest he really nailed it with the 41 and to do that in 1982 and there are still tons of the Irwin 41 literally floating around the east coast of the U.S. and the Caribbean. In the 1980s, Ted Irwin got back to his roots and he banged out a bunch of racing sailboats. Oddly enough, though, they were all called Razzle Dazzle. I'm not sure what that was about. It sounds very Miami Vice powerboat kind of thing, Razzle Dazzle. But on one of his Razzle Dazzles, he won the Southern Ocean Racing Conference, which is a pretty big deal. And that was the 1982 Razzle Dazzle. And subsequently, he sold that boat, and he sold a lot of his race-winning boats and got ridiculously high prices for each one of them. The really cool thing about the racing boats that he sold for ridiculously high prices because they won big title races and big medals and things like that was he took that money and sunk it back into Irwin Yachts. And that made the boats cheaper for people like you and me to buy an actual cruising boat. Ted Irwin did great things for the sailing world, and particularly the cruising sailors, by innovating and giving us really exactly what we wanted in a boat. But he also helped out fellow boat builders. In 1974, for example, he traded molds for the Irwin 32, that was his, for a small amount of company shares to Endeavor Yachts, which you probably know at this point. Endeavor was just starting up at the time and they were struggling to get up and running. So Ted Irwin stepped in, gave them a mold for a successful boat for a small amount of shares in their company. And now Endeavor is a big deal. Ted Irwin did that. Irwin Yachts also has the record for the most cruising boats built out of anyone else in the entire world in the class of over 50 feet with the Irwin models 52, 54, 65, and 68. Sadly, however, Irwin suffered the same as every other boat manufacturer suffered through the 1980s and eventually closed their doors in 1992. Even sadder, however, Ted Irwin, though he certainly left his legacy on sailing, racing, and especially cruising throughout the entire world throughout his career, he passed away in Little Rock, Arkansas in 2015 at the age of 74. Ted Irwin in his day had a different way of doing things. As we mentioned earlier, he did everything he could in house from boats to masts and marketing material, but he also bought everything he could in bulk. He would buy Dacron for sales, buy the boxcar from trains. He would load glass, huge, huge loads of fiberglass, way more than he needed, and he would stockpile so that he could save wherever he could. 
He also didn't carry any debt. The company didn't carry any debt sort of as a practice. The Irwin Yacht Company owned its buildings. They didn't lease them. They didn't rent them. And the molds and the tooling and even the land the facilities were located on in Florida, without the recurring costs of all those assets because they owned everything, Irwin Boats was able to sell boats a little bit cheaper than all of their competition throughout the 70s and 80s. So we come down to the question, do you want an Irwin? And that's actually a really easy question to answer. But to answer it, we have to honestly cover why you would not want an Irwin. Irwin cruisers, and that's probably what you're going to be looking at, um, the cruising variant of the, but they made a lot of racing boats, but the cruising variant are not a performance boat. They're known to be sort of doggy in light wind, and they won't point very high unless they have enough wind to carry their mass, which is quite heavy for their size. So upwind will probably be a lot of motoring. Also of point is while they were built to be blue water-ish, it's a coastal blue water. They were never meant to cross an ocean or go world cruising. The point of Irwin cruisers is really to island hop and bomb around the, the coast in reasonably high level of comfort as long as the weather permits it. The boats are simply not designed or built heavy enough to find yourself 100 miles offshore in a force 8 blow. If your plan is to cross oceans, then you probably want to keep shopping for a heavier and more capable boat. If, however, you're like most cruisers and you just want an older boat you can pick up for pretty much a song that has a lot of space and a proven track record and is well built and lots of teak and heavy laid up glass and you're just going to be Caribbean cruising and island hopping and bombing up and down the East Coast or the Keys, something that sails relatively well, then Irwin should definitely be on your list. Also something to think about if you have kids or small pets, the well-protected center cockpit models, which a lot of Irwins were, make a lot of sense. And the massive interior space and the great layout and they really take advantage of the square footage of the hull. Everything the boat has to offer tends to be on the interior with the aft cabins, the center cockpits. There's a lot of space in these things. So Irwin, as a conclusion, most were designed to do one thing. And we're not talking about the race boats. They made the Citation and different things like that that were quite good at racing. We're talking about the Irwins you and I would buy. They were designed to do one thing. They were designed to island hop through the Caribbean in comfort and space and safety. So if that's your plan, you should definitely look at them if you can find an owner willing to part with their Irwin because they love them.